welcome to some book time. I really love books and I wanted to share some of my favorite books about water and fish with you because it's Fish Friday and it's Water Week. So without further ado, here we go. Our first one is called Megalogus Pool. It's by Dr. Seuss and it was originally published in 1947 as this lovely uh, sub thing it tells you. It's in a bigger book like a, a ton of Dr. Seuss stories, so it's gonna be a little wobbly, sorry. Young man, laughed the farmer, you're sort of a fool. You'll never catch fish in McGillicut's pool. The pool is too small, and you might as well know it. When people have junk, here's the place where they throw it. You might catch a boot, or you might catch a can, you might catch a bottle, but listen, young man, if you sat 50 years with your worms and your wishes, you'd grow a long beard long before you'd catch fishes. said Marco. It may be you're right. I've been here three hours without one single bite. There might be no fish, but again, it might. Because you never can tell what goes on down below. This pool might be bigger than you or I know. This might be a pool, like I've read of in books, connected to one of those underground brooks, an underground river that starts here and flows right onto the pasture, and then, well, who knows? It might go along, down where no one can see, right under State Highway 203, right under the wagons, right under the toes of Mrs. Umbroso, who's hanging out clothes. It might keep on flowing, perhaps, who can tell, right under the people in Sneedon's Hotel, right under the grass where they're playing croquet, then under the mountains and far, far away. This might be a river, now mightn't it be, connecting the Gallagut's pool with the sea. Then maybe some fish might be swimming toward me. If such a thing could be, they certainly would be. Some very smart fellow might point out the way to the place where I'm fishing, and that's why I say, if I wait long enough, if I'm patient and cool, who knows what I'll catch in the Gallagher's pool. I might catch a thin fish, I might catch a stout fish, I might catch a short or a long, long, dried out fish. Any kind, any shape, any color or size, I might catch some fish that would open your eyes. I won't be surprised if a dogfish appears, complete with a collar and long floppy ears, woofing along, and perhaps he might chase a whole lot of catfish right straight to this place. I might catch a fish with a pinwheel-like tail. I might catch a fish who has fins like a sail. I might catch some young fish, some high-jumping friskers. I might catch an old one with long, flowing whiskers. I might catch a fish with a long, curly nose. I might catch a fish like a rooster that crows. I might catch a fish with a checkerboard belly or even a fish made of strawberry jelly. I might catch a seahorse, now mightn't I now? I might catch a fish who is partly a cow. Some fish from the tropics, all sunburned and hot, might decide to swim up. They might, might they not? Racing up north for a chance to get cool, full steam ahead from Gallagher's pool. Some Inuit fish from beyond Hudson Bay might decide to swim down, might be headed this way. It's a pretty long trip, but they might, and they may. I might catch an eel. Well, I might, it depends. A long, twisting eel with a lot of strange bends, and oddly enough, a head on both ends. One doesn't catch this kind of fish as a rule, but the chances are fine in McGillicut's pool. I might catch a fish with a terrible grouch or an Australian fish with a kangaroo's pouch. Who wants to catch small ones like mackerel or trout? Say, I'll catch a sawfish with such a long snout that he needs an assistant to help him about. If I wait long enough, if I'm patient and cool, who knows what I'll catch in McGillicut's pool. Some rough nickel lobster, all bristle and muscle, might grab at my bait, then would I have a tussle. To land one so tough might take two or three hours, but the next might be easy. The kind that likes flowers. I might catch some sort of a fast-moving bloke who zips through the waves with an overarm stroke. I might and I may, and that's really no joke. A fish even faster, a fish if you please, who slides down the sides of strange islands on skis. He might ski on over and pay me a visit. That's not impossible, really. Now is it? Some circus fish, fish from an acrobat school, might stage a big show in McGillicut's pool. Or I might catch a fish from a stranger place yet, from the world's highest river in far off Tibet, where the, wolf, blah, 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 where the falls are so steep that it's dangerous to ride them. So the fish put up shoots and they float down beside them. 
from the world's deepest ocean, from way down below, from down in the mud where the deep divers go, from down in the mire and the muck and the murk, I might catch some fish who are all going blurp. Whales, I'll catch whales, yes, a whole herd of whales, all spouting their spouts and all thrashing their tails. I'll catch 50 whales, then I'll stop for the day, because there's nothing that's bigger than whales, so they say. Still, of course, it might be that there is something bigger, some sort of a kind of a thingamajigger, a fish that's so big, if you know what I mean, that he makes a whale look like a tiny sardine. Oh, the sea is so full of a number of fish. If a fellow is patient, he might get his wish. And that's why I think that I'm not such a fool when I sit here and fish in the delegate school. Our next book is called Fish is Fish. Profound, I know. It's by Leo Leoni. At the edge of the woods there was a pond, and there a minnow and a tadpole swam among the weeds. They were inseparable friends. One morning the tadpole discovered that during the night he had grown two little legs. Look, he said triumphantly, look, I am a frog. Nonsense, said the minnow. How could you be a frog if only last night you were just a little fish like me? They argued and argued until finally the tadpole said, frogs are frogs and fish is fish and that is that. In the weeks that followed, the tadpole grew tiny front legs, and his tail got smaller and smaller. And then one day, a real frog now, he climbed out of the water and onto the grassy bank. The minnow, too, had grown and had become a full-fledged fish. He often wondered where his four-footed friend had gone, but days and weeks went by, and the frog did not return. Then one day, with a happy splash that shook the weeds, the frog jumped into the pond. Where have you been? asked the fish excitedly. I have been about the world, hopping here and there, said the frog, and I have seen extraordinary things. Like what? asked the fish. Birds, said the frog mysteriously. Birds! And he told the fish about the birds who had wings and two legs and many, many colors. As the frog talked, his friend saw the birds fly through his mind like large feathered fish. What else? asked the fish impatiently. Cows, said the frog, cows, they have four legs, horns, eat grass, and carry pink bags of milk. And people, said the frog, men, women, children, and he talked and talked until it was dark in the pond. But the picture in the fish's mind was full of lights and colors and marvelous things, and he couldn't sleep. Oh, if only he could jump about like his friend and see that wonderful world. And so the days went by. The frog had gone, the fish just lay there, dreaming about birds in flight, grazing cows and those strange animals all dressed up that his friend called people. One day, he finally decided that come what may, he too must see them. And so with a mighty whack of his tail, he jumped clear out of the water onto the bank. He landed in the dry, warm grass, and there he lay gasping for air, unable to breathe or move. Help, he groaned feebly. Luckily, the frog, who had been hunting butterflies nearby, saw him and with all his strength pushed him back into the pond. Still stunned, the fish floated about for an instant. Then he breathed deeply, letting the clean, cool water run through his gills. Now he felt weightless again, and with an ever so slight motion of the tail, he could move to and fro, up and down as before. The sun rays reached down within the weeds and gently shifted patches of luminous color. The world was surely the most beautiful of all worlds. He smiled at his friend the frog, who sat watching him from a willow leaf. You are right, he said. Fish is fish. One more. The Upside Down Fish, written by Kate Louise and illustrated by Laura Mateen. Upside down fish swims upside down. Down is up and up is down. He lives at the pet store in a tank full of fish that swim the right way up. Upside down fish is very lonely. He doesn't like being one of a kind. None of the other fish let him join in with their right way up fishy swimming. When children come to choose a fish for a pet, they never pick upside down fish to take home. He doesn't think they notice him. 
One very dull day, upside down fish spent his morning swimming around and around the tank. Then he blew bubbles in the afternoon. Later, the tank was opened and food fell from above, or from below, in upside down fish's case. The fish dashed up, or is it down, and gobbled up the food. The water rocked from side to side. Upside down fish was left confused and floating in a large empty space. And at that exact moment, a child came into the store to the fish. I want that one, the girl said, the one that's swimming upside down. Splash. A net popped into the water and upside down fish was finally scooped up. He was put into a bag and taken out of the pet store. The world looked very strange to upside down fish. You see, the ground was up above and the sky was down below. Upside down fish had a brand new tank to call home. But oh no, all the fish in the tank were swimming the right way up. Upside down fish, is for upside down fish worried that the fish wouldn't accept him, just like the ones back at the pet store. But when upside down fish was placed into the tank, he got a very warm welcome. The right way up fish wanted to know what the world looked like upside down. Some of them even flipped onto their fins. Some of them even flapped their fins and flipped onto their backs to see for themselves. Upside down fish was finally happy and realized that it's okay not to be the same as all the other fish. In fact, it's quite nice to be a little bit different. After all, in a tank full of right way up fish and only one upside down fish, who do you think stands out more? The end. Thank you for coming and reading some stories. I'm going to have to turn this off in a